So which rocks are older and which rocks are younger? What's what we're going to talk about today? Locks of old rocks and the young rocks. So what I'm talking about is if we look at the picture here, um, you would assume that the oldest, the, the youngest rocks kind of on the, or probably the oldest rocks on the bottom and the youngest rock is on top. And typically that's actually true. But if we look over here at this picture, if you see some kind of a thing right here, you might think something a little bit different, see? So rocks are kind of funny. And so we're gonna learn today about what rocks are old and which rocks are young. So let's go out and do that, okay? All right, here's the thing we want to talk about today. Uplift, subsidence, principles of superposition, the principle of original horizontality, the principle of lateral continuity, cross-cutting relationships and unconformities. So let's get out of here. Let's talk about uplift, something we haven't exactly talked about. Tectonic uplift is a geologic process most often caused by plate tectonics, which increases elevation. Up lift. It means it goes up. And so this rock, as we'll learn about later right here, this span of rock was probably laid down flat. And then there was, it was uplifted, okay, some kind of a, of a, of a, a uplifting, pushing it up, making uh, this mountain. Typically it has to do with mountain formation. Subsidence is the motion of a surface, usually on the Earth's surface, as it shifts downward. And if you look right here, this is a section near Castleton, United Kingdom, it's uh, like uh, uh, England, right? Destroyed by geological subsidence, now permanently closed. You can see what's happening is that this has fallen. It's not just erosion. A lot of people think of this as erosion, but the entire ground has subsided. There's actually in Colorado an area where there's lots of subsidence, although it's not necessarily caused by geologic processes. They actually have this uh, uh, underground mining, all right? So they have this mining underground. So here's the surface of the earth, and then they have these tunnels down here. And what they do is they, they take the material, it's coal that they're getting, they get the coal, and then they take the coal to the top, and then they burn it for electricity. But what happens is, is they, dig, they dig this, and all of a sudden all of this material right here it collapses down on there and you'll have areas where you'll get subsidence uh, caused by human mining so that's uh, another thing um, causes of uplift and subsidence what causes it the movement of the earth's lithospheric plates so if you have motion of the plates remember like converging plates and stuff like that that would cause or diverging plates or transform maybe converging and diverging then um, that causes uplift and subsidence also interesting thing you can also change the temperature of the rocks if a rock gets hot or temperature goes up then it will expand and if it cools or the temperature goes down, then it will contract. And so if you think of contraction, that would cause subsidence. And uh, expansion is caused by increased temperatures. You see this in volcano, volcanoes, volcanoes, volcanoes. You see it in volcanoes because, of course, the temperature is rising, which causes uplift because of the hot temperatures. So probably near hot spots, you'll see quite a bit of uplift as well. All right. Now we want to learn about how we can tell how old rocks are, and there's a several principles that we want to learn about. The first one is the principle of superposition, and this is basically what it says. If you have an undisturbed sequence of rocks deposited in layers, layers are, you know, one layer, two layer, three layer, like that, right? A, B, C, etc. Um, the youngest layer is on top and the oldest on the bottom, each layer being younger than the one beneath it and older one above it. So if we look at the picture right here, we have um, essentially, if you kind of look right here, here would be one layer. We'll call this layer A. And then we have layer probably B right here. And now I'm seeing a line here, C, D. You can kind of get the idea. Probably that's E right here, F right there, F. -F and maybe this is the G right here. So if you were to figure this out, the A, this would be the oldest rock, and then G would be the youngest rock. Now that's easy to look at this because they're in a nice flat layers, but sometimes they don't always um, follow that layer. Hey, let's uh, do a quick video clip where we're gonna talk about the principle of superposition. I wanna talk today about the principle of superposition. That says that the youngest rocks are on top and the lowest rocks are on the bottom. I want to illustrate that with some paper. So let's say that this uh, uh, orange or goldenrod paper, this goldenrod paper represents um, the, uh, the rocks. And it gets layered. Um, the first one gets layered, that's an old. 
And then the purple comes on top. So a different rock, a uh, later time, gets laid on top. So well, which one is younger? Well, the one on uh, top. And then if another one gets layered, let's say the pink ones, all right, so different rocks gets layered on top. Oh, we get another one. And if we keep going, we can put some more rocks on top, kind of the orange or peachy colored, and eventually let's say the blue. And now if we were to look at this right here, we can figure out which layer is the youngest. Well, the youngest one is the one on the, on the top, the blue one, and the oldest one is the one on the bottom, which is what looks like it's kind of golden colored. Now, rocks can sometimes also get folded. So as I turn this, they might get folded, but you still get the same idea. See, we can get the anticline and the syncline here. Here's the syncline right here with the downward or an anticline. In some cases, they can even get folded over. Very rare that this happens, but there are places where this happens. And so that'd be kind of a weird one, uh, but it does. But originally, they're layered um, with the oldest on the bottom and the youngest on the top. Well, good. I hope that kind of was clear to you, principle of superposition. Now let's talk about the principle of original horizontality. Now the word horizontal, if you recall, if you are horizontal laying in your bed, then you are laying flat. Basically, it says that layers of sediment were orig originally deposited. First of all, it's sediment, and sediment has to do with sedimentary rocks. Because if you recall from our first podcast, second podcast, whenever we did sedimentary rocks, we learned that sedimentary rocks you've got um, a body of water, this is water right here, and there's a bunch of uh, uh, silt and stuff. And as that stuff settles to the bottom of the ocean or body of lake, which typically is flat, it makes a layer that eventually turns into a rock. And you make sandstone or uh, things like that. So they are originally deposited horizontally. These two gals right here um, are uh, at an outcrop and you can see each layer right here is uh, layered one at a time, and then of course uh, they're layered horizontally. That doesn't mean they'll always be horizontal, but then they are originally deposited, they are horizontal. Well, let's watch a quick video clip of this as well. Now I want to talk about the principle of horizontality. It just really just says that rocks, um, sedimentary and igneous rocks, are roughly laid down in horizontal layers. So when you have a sedimentary rock, sedimentary rocks, as you recall, are uh, formed from sediments. So basically there's an ocean or some kind of a body of water, and the sediments settle out. So their first layer, uh, they're going to be uh, laid down uh, horizontally, flat, horizontal is flat. Now it says approximately, it might be at an angle. So if you have some kind of a, uh, of a mountain, you might have a bit of an angle because like a, maybe a... A volcano, uh, the igneous rocks might flow downhill just a skosh. They're not going to be way like this. They're going to be, you know, horiz horizontal or just slightly off horizontal. So that's that's the principle of horizontality. Okay, hopefully that was pretty clear. Now a next one is called the principle of lateral continuity. If something is continuous, it means it continues. All right, so here we have layers of sediment initially extend laterally, okay, in all directions, that's uh, flat. In, in other words, they are laterally continuous. As a result, rocks that are otherwise similar but are now separated by a valley or other erosional feature can be assumed to be originally continuous. So if we look at the picture here, actually the next slide will have it bigger so we can talk about this. Let's take a look at this picture. These rocks were layered, um, if we call this A, and this B, and this C, and this D, if you think about it for a moment, A was layered first, and they were all together, B, C, here, and D, but what happened is there was an uplift moment, and then the whole center of this got eroded away. Actually, if you do that, and then this would be like E, and then this green thing would be F, right? And so what happens is, is that we're assuming that these right here, C for example, these were all the same rock, even though they're separated possibly by m many, many miles, that you will still have these things that were laid, laid down at the same time. But subsequent events, the uplift and the erosion and then the addition of the, the E sediment, um, is on there. In fact, if we were to kind of like put these in order, who uh, was the youngest? It would actually, the way I kind of gave it away, it's probably A. A is the uh, oldest, and then B, and then C, and then D. And even though this is now not on top, E and then F. This would be in that order. I just put it in order. That's necessarily, yeah, that's the way it would be. Okay?